Uh, welcome to the show. We have a special guest with us tonight. Uh, Marino is, or, or, or Poppy, as you see in his little screen there. But, uh, Poppy. He's a the big nor little, just Poppy. That's right. Poppy. He's, 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 uh, He's a local celebrity with some, some 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 mad talent, so we're glad to have him here to exchange some stories with us. He's Yo, also lived a little bit in the world, so yeah, so he lived a little bit in the world, so he's had some fun and some times. I guess that's kind of what we're here about. Um, do you have any transformative or or um, specific unique stories that you think were defining in your life? Not necessarily good or bad. Yeah. Not necessarily even necessarily about drinking. Maybe it could be about quitting drinking or something like that. But either way, as long as it's associated with that narrative that's kind of what we do here you know yeah yeah for sure i don't know man it's just it's crazy because i have so much so much crazy stories that sh i should that like should have made me stop drinking but i just kept going you know what i'm saying <laughs> yes i do yeah, i absolutely bro. do yeah like i got I've been, i've been in like i swear to god 30 fights but i've lost every single one you know what I mean? Like, I've never won a fist fight in my life. And it's all because of drinking. How big are you, Marito? Five foot two, bro. 127 pounds. And Bob, let's Ooh, contrast that. Way, he's a five foot one, so bro. I'm only, I'm only six foot 11, 440. Okay. <laughs> so this is a 300 pounds and what is that? One foot and what? Eight, nine inches or something like that difference? Yeah, Almost something three. in there, yeah. Right. You, guys should be, you guys should be a tag team wrestling team duo. But it has to be Mexican wrestling. We got to wear the masks. Luchador oh, style. Buddy. If you were wearing the luchador mask, it'd be amazing. <laughs> it'd be incredible. I got to get one of those. Yeah. Yeah, I know, you know what that's like. I mean, I, I, we, I told stories on the show about fight night. We used to do the same thing. Every Friday night, me and my brothers would get way too wasted, go out and just get into brawls constantly. I, yeah. I didn't lose them very often, but there's a difference because... Now, my brothers are big guys, too, and it was sort of a thing we did. We're all bouncers and stuff, right? Yeah. But uh, the stupidity, the absolute mindlessness of a lot of the behavior I got into is hard to believe in retrospect. You know, you look back on some of these things, and you're like, holy shit, I can't believe I was there. I can't believe I did that, you know? Yeah, bro. I, I've been – I've woken up in drunk tanks for, like, for years. Like, I would wake up – I would go to a city, and I would just wake up in their drunk tanks, and I became famous in Calgary – and uh, also in Toronto, so that would just, every weekend I would wake up in the drug tank. The cops knew me by name. Um, how much of that was linked to comedy shows, or was this before comedy? Buddy, before when when comedy started, it got even worse. Really? That's, that's yeah. when I started traveling. You know, wow. I start waking up in yeah, other. Yeah, on the road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, that's man. funny that, for that me. Was the worst. For me, when I started doing stand up, yeah, my drinking. You know, can I smoke a cigar? Yeah, of course. Can you smoke? Yeah. You smoke the show has no rules. Not yet. <laughs> you just have to pass it through the, uh, you got to give us a little, uh -huh. like. Yeah, sorry, what were uh, you saying, bro? So I was saying, like, for me, I, my, just to kind of fill you in on everyone's, like, stages of drinking, kind of where it has been in their life. I, I was a rager in university. That's, like, where I learned to drink. And then yeah. never really stopped partying when I transitioned into a professional career. So I was like all through my 20s and maybe half of my 30s, basically like partying, blackout, drunk, fun. Not, not so much fights like you, but a lot of wasted money, a lot of blackout nights, like piecing together nights, probably some embarrassing situations and, and like stupid shit said to to girls and relationships and things like that but now i don't really like i drink a little bit here and there but i don't like party 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 hard but um but it's just interesting how like because because you said you had how many fights like 30 like 30 fights and that's not even exaggerating every time and dude it, bro bob it would always be with big guys like you <laughs> like i don't right. that doesn't surprise me no, either bob. Bob, Bob bro, would tell us stories. Man. That's Bob's He would tell life. us stories about how this, the, yeah. the big claim is that the smallest guys are always picking fights. With <laughs> yeah, and, for sure. And it always comes from this misinterpretation of some like fairy tale or something your aunt or uncle told you. Like, if you take on the biggest guy in the room, you'll be you'll prove yourself or something. <laughs> I'm really not sure if ending up in a gurney, like being carried away by the paramedics, is, is evidence of self worth, but. <laughs> I've seen so it after that, that one goes. 
when you end up in the drug tank, was that a citation or what is that? What do they say the next morning? How does that go down? Bro, so they, when you get in, I never remember going in, right? <laughs> but, but, they, but they take away your shoes, they take away your wallet, so you have nothing in your pockets. And uh, it's freezing cold. Have you guys ever been to a drug tank? Yeah, I have. Oh, yeah. Bro, it's oh, freezing cold. Like the, the, the floors are piss stained. Right, uh, they give you nowhere to sleep. You're just sleeping on a corner. I had to like tuck into my shirt. Like it's just, it's freezing. And then, have you guys ever seen uh, American Gangster? Where uh, yeah. Frank Lucas gets let out of prison and then the gates open up slowly. And outside, mm. just like downtown New York and he just walks out and he's all disheveled and shit. That's how every morning feels when you leave uh, the drunk tank. You just, you're back out into society. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and you walk word. right under the yeah, and you walk right out under the street too. Right like it's not like, the street. Yeah, you're, you're not on some country jogging, road or you're something. Going to your no. job. Yeah. <laughs> you're cool. like, yo, where's the weed at? <laughs> yeah, yo, and that's what I used to do, man. I used to just start drinking again. Right. Yeah. I'm yeah, very that, that, that goes to terrifying places, man, really fast. You keep a couple days like that going, and you're in a lot of trouble. Oh, buddy, it was the work. I remember, I remember um, when I, when I was drinking like crazy here in Toronto. It was there was a night where I would wake up in a different after hours every morning, and it was five days straight. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I know guys like that. I work in I work in late night establishments. I've definitely met the guys who just go from spot to spot, and, and you know, I dated a girl for a while. That's all she did basically was just straight from one after hours to the next, you know, she'd crash out somewhere for a couple hours and then just as soon as something was open, she'd go right back to that, you know what I mean? Yeah, and it's crazy because every time I go to after hours, I'm not a drug guy. I've never been a drug dude. Yeah, yeah. Right, I don't seek it, whatever, it just booze for me. But every time I'm at an after hours, uh, somebody gives me free cocaine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah it's always there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah one the, that's one of the unfortunate realities of the, of the booze can industry. It's it goes hand in hand so legitimately with people who do a lot of that that there's just blow everywhere. It's crazy. Yeah, man, and I don't even like it. I hate cocaine. It's just like it doesn't really do anything. I guess it just sobers me up, and so I can drink more. Yeah, yeah that's well, usually pretty much sa- pretty much same for me too. I've never really taken to it. Any time I end up doing it, it's an accidental <laughs> bump in the road at like two thirty in the morning, and then your night. Literally spot. a bump in the road, bro. And and you know what's crazy too. <laughs> Is that it's so fun. I love it. I feel like a white girl when I'm on cocaine. <laughs> Everything feels like I can do anything. I feel like I'm you're like that up. all the time, though. I feel like you're like that all the time, Marito. Like you're, you have that, you have cocaine energy 24 <laughs> seven. White girl cocaine energy? You do, okay, yeah. That, that's yeah. like what I was saying earlier is when, when I started, uh, I actually didn't finish what I was meaning to say. I kind of got off track, but, um, when I started stand up, I kind of made the decision. I was like, oh, fuck. If I'm going to be in bars and comedy clubs and drinking at and before and after shows, and my goal is to do this full time, like I, I, I knew inherently that that was a recipe for disaster. So when I started stand up, I basically curbed drinking at shows. I would still drink a little bit maybe after sometimes, maybe yeah. a drink or two before, but I knew that like, I was like, I'd seen enough documentaries about stand-up comedians that I'd be like, oh, fuck, this is going to fuck me up. Because I already, through my um, 20s and 30s, already was like borderline, like pretty heavy party, 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 party. Yeah. Um, but then had to then realize that like, fuck, if I go down that path and I'm a performer. But for me, what I found is what I seeked, what I, what I was seeking from booze was the personality of being big and audacious and loud and like life of the party and all that stuff. And I got that from stage. So as soon as I stepped on stage or if I was now when I'm doing like TV and film and sketch comedy, I get to be a crazy fucking wild man who like, there's no limits. I can do whatever I want. And that for me was what I was seeking when I was getting fucked up in university and going to parties and just being like, and fucking yeah, doing all the crazy sure. shit it was sure. just attention and performance for me 
And generally in my normal day-to-day -day life, like you, you guys know me when we're just chilling, I'm like super chill, super like pretty low key. Like I can be fun and ham yeah, it up, yeah. but I'm not a fucking party animal, but I was a party. I was like all through twenties and, and half of my thirties. I was basically Will Ferrell, Frank the Tank at, <laughs> at every like, and then you'd spill out of the bar and I never left a bar before like 220 like I would leave a bar when they would kick us out or when we'd run out of money or when we'd run out of booze or whatever some like, combination yeah. there in the middle yeah yeah some some combination and then and then now like I started to like for me personally I can't speak for everyone and, and everyone like it's different for everybody but I've I've kind of recently not been drinking much just because I see it as like um almost like um like an emergency break like not that i was it wasn't like hugely detrimental to me but i'm like is it slowing me down could i use all the extra money i spend on booze could i use some of the brain cells and and i also hated being i fucking can't stand um uh hangovers i started oh, getting like no. two-day hangovers where i, I can't I, I can't do it though my, my withdrawals are insane yeah that's why i keep going when i drink Right, 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 right. You got to just keep the wheel spinning because, yeah, like, oh. I was yeah, having, terrible. I would get drunk, like, like blackout drunk on a Saturday and not feel like a normal human being till like a Tuesday afternoon. Yeah. And it was like two sevenths of my life is non productive. I feel like shit. I don't feel, and I felt I was feeling depressed. Like it was le legitimately, I was feeling it depressing me. So I, I recently kind of, not been drinking as much but when when throughout this so you just described uh a, like a five-day bender for lack of a better term yeah I was when, when throughout the yeah binges benders when yeah. throughout this for you like were you thinking while that was happening this is bad and this is a problem or were you just fucking partying or when did you make the decisions to be like oh like this is so I, I never used to drink at all because because my dad is an AA right okay so I just I don't want a part of it but then uh in like at the end of high school all my boys started drinking so I was like ah fuck it I'll do it and I just loved it you know what I mean like I felt dude, this like yeah, yeah. freedom because I've always yeah. been a I've always been like a like outgoing dude I would always have fun right but right. booze did something else though like it made me right. it because I've always had insecurities even You're though I was outgoing you. yeah it erased that insecurity. You right, know what those I mean? inhibitions are gone. Yeah, so right. there you are. That was yeah, bro, too. I could talk to girls. I could, uh, like, you know, talk to big guys like you. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was like, <laughs> the man. No, I get it, for sure. But even though that was a lie, because I was always the man. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I was always right. like, like a cool guy, but the booze just tricked me into being like, oh, this is like God-level shit. So I remember like it was all cool, it was all good. I was in university, I was like getting an English degree, but then I got beat up by the cops, I got beat up by the bouncers, I would wake up in drunk tanks, and then eventually I got kicked out of school, right? So yeah. I had nothing to do, and um, I just started doing stand-up bro, right? And I thought that the stand-up would like take me out of like drinking and all that, but as you know, bro, it's even worse because <laughs> we get paid in booze. <laughs> right right yeah. yeah how many shows you get paid in drink tickets or just a free yeah, bro. So yeah especially when you're beginning right right because right? you yeah. don't get paid you just get you just get booze and all that shit so it just for a minute um i wasn't drinking because i was focused on getting good right but then eventually when i started feeling like more comfortable on stage and you know like using booze as a crutch i just it got bad man right and then uh, Yuck Yucks like signed me. I started getting like heat, like guys from Toronto were like, yo bro, you should move out here. And then I would just like miss shows. I would get stuck in the road. There was one weekend where I was in Grand Prairie. I, I was doing shows and I was only supposed to be there three nights. I ended up staying a week. Because we were just cruising? Yeah, I missed my flight home. The other comics left without me. Uh, I woke up in jail. It was, it was like fucked up. Right, so you, yeah. you clearly were seeing it like affecting all aspects yeah, of your everything, life. Bro. Everything, oh, and yeah. then I had to go to rehab, right? I did all that shit, and then I moved to Toronto, and I'm like, okay, I'm good now. But then, like, I relapsed again, and uh, the worst is when I went to a, a comedy festival, 
and I got so hammered that I tried fighting the organizer. That's <laughs> the <It's a> festival. <laughs> That's hilarious. I was fighting everybody. And I was like, I was right. like, yo, man, what the fuck did you say to me? <laughs> I was that Which, little dude. Is there a certain elixir that sparks your your inner fighting Irish, or is, or what is it? Is it just anything? Bro, everything. That's the thing with me, man. If it, if it, like, I hate when people are like, yo, man, this 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 beer is so musky, or whatever the fuck. I'm like, what are you talking about? It's beer, you know. Just drink it. Like, I love everything. Tequila. A fucking whiskey. I'm not like it doesn't matter to me if it's booze. Right. It's booze. And you know how you're saying that you would you would like stay until you had no more money, bro. Yeah. I'm the type of dude that I, after the the club is closed, I'm that guy who walks around the tables drinking people's drinks. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. Em- yeah. Empty pitchers and yeah. I'm yeah. that dude, bro. I don't give a That's fuck. Awesome. I, have no chance. I feel like everyone on this call has done that, so you're in good. Oh, company. Man, yeah. yeah. I've definitely oh, yeah. finished many other people's drinks. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I've definitely been the wake up in the morning guy at the party, wander around and finish all the half beers and like just like. Uh, do you ever, do you do ever put it together into a jumbo jumbo magic juice and see what happens? All yeah. the time. Yeah. <laughs> all the time. It's a little bit of gin, a little bit of light beer, a little bit of cider. Yeah. Brutal. And oh, dude, and I lo- oh, dude, if you if there is one drink that I love, it's cider. Yeah. yeah, yeah I can't drink cider. cider. You can drink cider. Yeah. yeah. I said I wouldn't have pegged you for a cider guy. Bro, I love <laughs> cider because it goes down so smoothly. If you just get fucked up, you get lost, bro. You get lost it's like, in the it's like Seven percent. Right. Or yeah, or more, or more depending. Or yeah, more. And it could be. Oh yeah, yeah. Up, up, up to twelve, thirteen. If you can drink the right cider. Get but on yeah. that stone. Get on that stone fruit. Look out. <laughs> but Intense, but what, what made me stop though? Like you were saying, bro. Like it's just like. I have all these opportunities in stand up. Like I'm like one of the only few Latinos in like comedy. Right. And I was like, oh man, I have a platform. Like people book me on shows. Like I'm on TV. I, I I'm an actor. I do all these things, and it's like, am I really gonna throw this all away because because it feels good to drink cider? Or like you know what I mean? Because right. even though that shit is like, even though that shit is like gross to people, like drinking other people's drinks. You know what I mean? Like uh, waking up in drunk tanks. There's a part of me that loves it. Yeah, <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? I love it. I love waking up at a party and everyone's going home, but there's still booze everywhere. There's bottles. There's other people's drinks, and I stay there. I stay in a stranger's house and I drink, bro. I love that shit. Right. But, but, but I had to like, I had to be like, oh man, like, what do you love more though? Like your career or that? Because right. you can't have one or the other. Right. Yeah. yeah, that's a really good perspective that that uh, that that's why you like it was it was feeding something um, like I think for a lot of us, it's the adventure in it. Like there is something funny, like getting a bunch of your buddies together and you go off and you all get fucked up and you never know what's going to happen. And then you're calling each other the next day like, oh, where'd you end up? Oh, no way. Like and you're yeah. telling stories about girls and like fucked up shit. You lose shit like. There is yeah. a sense oh. of adventure to it. It's Dude, often, it feels like drinking, it's a better story. While I was drinking, I lost my fucking, my Alberta ID, because I'm originally from Alberta. I lost my SIN card. I lost my Canadian citizenship, okay? And my Canadian citizenship is a picture of me four mm. years old. And I used to <laughs> use it as ID, and people would let me in. <laughs> <laughs> I lost that shit. I lost my passport. I lost everything, bro. Like, two years ago, I thought I, I was so scared because I had no idea. I thought I was going to get deported. And really? Was, eh? <laughs> that's crazy. So, but you have it well, all I know, I, know exactly what that, I know exactly what that's like. There's a lot of times during, you know, when you're in a bender, you just, you end up coming home with like, you're lucky you have your pants. You know, yeah. you've been even out for a couple of days. You've been at crazy playful places. You don't know where you were. You don't know how you got home. You don't know how you got there. You have absolutely no idea where any of this stuff could be. You never find it again. You just got to chalk it up as well. That's gone. The, the drunk ate that one. It's all over. Like, see you later. Right. Oh, 1,000. And you the thing work? is, the thing is, I work in the bars and I work as a bouncer and I work in, in after hours <laughs> and stuff as well. So when, when I'm working, one of the problems with, with not being a drinker, trying not to be a drinker, which I'm not really, but if you try to be a drinker, it's easy. And if you try not to be, it's almost impossible because that's literally what you do for a living is sling and handle liquor. It's just like, well, here's liquor. Yeah. You know, and I've, always had, 
yeah, and I've always had an enormous tolerance too. So one of the, the, the hazmats there is I can drink, you know, 10, 20 beers and not really realize I've done it. Oh, just body. have no idea, you know, yeah. just like, well, it's been a couple of days and I've just been drinking beer every half hour, have a beer, you know, blah, blah, blah. It goes by pretty fast all of a sudden, you know? The thing is with me, I black out like this. Yeah. Right? I've never built the tolerance, but what's terrifying about me is that I keep going. Somehow I stay awake, but I'm blacked out and God knows where the fuck I end up. And I yeah. only, I go down when somebody knocks me out or cops arrest me. <laughs> after, after you finish all the booze at the party. <laughs> You could be like the uh, someone could hire you to come uh, and clean up parties at the end of nights. You, you sleep Yo, in at like dude, three a.m. Back in the day, the that would have been my dream drinks. job. I yeah, done you, that. Charge them, you charge them an extra couple of dollars for every cigarette butt you drink by accident, you know. But other than that, you just carry on. Yeah, I YouTube, used to love that shit. YouTube, like despite your size difference, you two like are both like drunk superheroes because. <laughs> Like you said, either getting knocked out or the police take you out. And Bob, that's basically the same that's thing. Basically that would the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's well like, said. Um, I would lose track of everything and fucking then have a monster for a week and then just have no idea where you are or what's up. And again, you're absolutely right. Like getting either getting, getting thrown out of the bar completely or the bar has been closed for two hours and they still can't get me to leave. And I'm just like, oh, I'm drinking more. I don't care what you say, you know? And they're like, oh man, please. Like, you know, right. take our booze and leave us alone. I remember I was down. Yeah, I remember I was downtown uh, Calgary once and I was drinking. It was like m fucking 3 a.m. It's a nice restaurant, too. And they're like, yo, listen, buddy, you got to you got to go. Like, you shouldn't even be drinking right now. Like, so like you got to dip. And no, it wasn't it wasn't 3 a.m. It was like two or something. But uh, I was like, nah, man, you see this stool? This stool is mine. And then they were like, oh, yeah. And it was a big guy, too. He's like, oh yeah, that stool's yours, and I'm like, yeah, bro, you 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 can never get me out of here because this stool belongs to Mario Marito Lopez, okay? And the guy was like, cool, and then he took the stool up out under me, and then my my eye hit the corner of the bar. It was just gushing blood, and then after I'm like, I guess this is your stool, <laughs> and then and then I walked across the street, and I don't know how because it was like like 2 a.m., the, the bar across the street served me, and my face was gushing. Wow. That's Alberta, right? That's Only Alberta, Alberta, bro. That's classic yeah. Alberta. That's yeah, like that you happens. got kicked in the face <laughs> by some animal, right? Yeah, here, here's a beer. Yeah. No, that happens good. everywhere. I've, I've, I've had the same thing. I've walked in, like, two black guys, you know, bloody nose, and been like, I'd like, you know, two whiskey and a pint of beer, and they just look at you like, yeah, sure. Like that's a, that's right. a normal face you should be having at 1 30 in the morning on a tuesday like there you go here's your drinks you know yeah but with, with you bob part of that is if they've experienced you before they also know that you don't take no for an answer no i don't right? like if they had wow. said no you would have kind of looked like you would have been like yeah i think i'm and then you would have walked behind the bar and started pouring it and the guy just yeah, been like tapping on your shoulder <laughs> that's true that's <laughs> That's the, uh, the interesting so thing too. This is funny, like um, the, the, not to keep harping on your size difference, but the one thing about Bob is most people when they get blackout drunk or when they pass out, like especially girls or smaller guys, you have a buddy that can wrangle you or manhandle you. Bob, if you're passed out drunk, the only option is police and or paramedics, like, or a fireman, you know, like no, <laughs> no regular human is gonna be able to move you. but. But you, Marito, you must have some of your bigger buddy friends who have, when you eventually passed out, like tossed you over their shoulder and like carried you, carried you home, no? Oh, buddy, all the time. But right. like, the thing is my boys love me so much that like they did that for years. And then eventually it was like, dude, I can't hang out with you. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I, can't, I can't be with you. And, right. and there was bouncers too who would love me who would love me when I when they first met me, but then by the end of it, they were like, no, you right. are not coming in here, bro. You know? Right, it just became yeah. too much. How long, really how long did it take for that reputation, like for the bouncers and the police to like uh, eventually get it gets around? Bro, I would, I would honestly, I would always give it a month, you know? Because I would stop <laughs> drinking and then I would like start again and I would be like, you know, giving myself limits, but then eventually that shit goes out the window and within a month, it's brutal. 
right you yeah have that you have that fail safe period where you've sort of got a hold of yourself you think okay i'm hurl- over the hurdle i'm you know into this next phase and then you have that one night out party with the boys and next thing you know it's all over yeah it's all over bro every single time or you sit there or you sit there you know it's even weirder because it'll happen like this, the craziest things like one of my bosses was like oh hang out with me after work we'll have two beers i'm like yeah sure let's have two beers you know four bottles of whiskey 26 beers and like six hours later we're still sitting there drinking and i'm uh-huh. like and i'm like this was not two beers anymore this was like two days worth of alcohol poured down my throat in the last four hours like i'm yeah <laughs> I'm hammered and one of our buddies he took off like he knew better he'd been drinking with this manager before he just ran he was like no i'm out he booked it and so me and this guy drank we ended up almost going to columbia we had our passports we're all ready to go we got a lot of cash in our hands ready to go to the airport and it's like it occurred to me all of a sudden, it's like, no guy can really fly. <laughs> I get to the airport, I walk in there, and my buddy's going to be like hanging on my arm. We're like, okay, so we want to get two tickets to Columbia right now. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. Like Canada yeah. Border and Customs agents haven't seen that before. You're going to be like, oh, sure. Come on over here, guys. Hop on this fucking plane. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't think so, right? <laughs> I remember one time I was, I was doing a show in Edmonton, and I was so drunk that I, like, I just, like a whole week went by and I don't know what the fuck happened to that week. And when I woke up, I was in Grand Prairie. <laughs> like that's, that's fucked up. Wow. That's incredible. Wow. Good. Yeah. That's pretty good. Gra- and I'm like, how the fuck did I get here? You know what I mean? Like, the autopilot. Bro, going back to Alberta, when I go back home, it's, it's like, there's, it's like, you, yo, you guys ever get, you ever, you guys ever walk in a building and then like you get haunted all of a sudden? You're like, oh fuck, I've been here. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like, oh, yeah but shit, you're not sure if you've Marito. actually been there or not. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, drunk Don't Marito mean. has been here before. <laughs> yeah, drunk. <laughs> yeah, I've done that before. Drunk, drunk me has Marito. been here before. <laughs> it was the ghost. Yeah, you're like, what the fuck? You were being haunted by the ghost of your past drunk self in this yeah. room. You could hear Maybe. yourself screaming. Yeah, dude, I did a lot. I did a lot of acid, a lot of hallucinogens. And I'll tell you, you get that haunted feeling in a lot of familiar places, but it's that it's like a split second thing. Like a train will come in, you'll be looking at just the right angle, and you'll be like, "I remember this from somewhere, but it wasn't good the first time." And you're yeah. like, oh. "And for a second, you get that fear again." You're like, "Oh, what the?" And then, goes, <laughs> and then it passes. And you're like, "No, wait a minute, man. I'm just going to work. Everything's fine. Like I'm great, you know." Or like yeah. you get into a cab and you'll smell something, and they'll be like, "Oh, oh, where am I?" <laughs> and then you're like, "Oh, okay, whoa, whoa, whoa," you know. Oh, dude! I, I, all the time. I used to get that all the time in like familiar places. You know, you you've been yeah. there a thousand times, but all of a sudden, just for a split second, it was like this is not familiar anymore. This is really weird. I remember that time; it was super weird. You know, I constantly have that, constantly still. But you know what's crazy? What's crazy is that like I smell, like you were saying, I smell like drunk past, right? Yeah. But now, yeah, yeah, yeah. but now because I've been through recovery. I also smell rehab. Like I'll be walking somewhere and then I smell something like, like how it used to be in rehab, like the meals or like the going outside and like smoking cigars with like a can like this. And then I'm like, oh fuck, that it, it's cool because like you have these things that bring you fear, these memories, but then also these right. memories that bring you hope. It's yeah, crazy. Well, I guess that's life's reward, right? I mean, it can't always shit on you. There has yeah. to be things that it can give you back. And if you look for those things, you can find them. I mean, the joy of family, the joy of compassion, the joy of, of overcoming obstacles, taking responsibility, all these things are difficult, but they're valuable because they're difficult. Exactly. You know? They yeah. have virtue. They have virtue and they have value because they're not easy. They're not common. It takes, it takes responsibility. It takes gusto to yeah. do these things. It's very easy to meet the status quo and stay the same all the time. You know, that's very easy. And most yeah. people do that. So it's really big of anyone to be able to, to rec- recognize their, their failures and to take steps to make themselves a better person. It's just, you know, yeah. and it's, I know that's, I know that's fucking cliched. Like it's exactly what everyone says in self-help and shit like that, but it's the truth. That's why everyone fucking says it. You know what I mean? That's, that's, a, that's exactly the truth, man. Like cliches, I used to fucking hate them, but yeah. the more and more I mature and get older, I'm like, Oh, those cliches, like they were real though. They, they were the only yeah. things that kept me alive and going, 
You know what I'm saying? It's like you don't know how to implement them until you make a few mistakes or, or like you have a few follies and then it's like suddenly a cliche just all of a sudden makes way more sense than it never did. And you're like, ah. Oh. That's part of it. That's part of I mean, it. But I think it's also when you're willing to make that sacrifice that all of a sudden that sacrifice has value. And oh, so hearing yeah, those... Really. So hearing those cliches means nothing until you're put in the emotional experience when you actually have to live one. Oh, and then my. you have to say to yourself, okay, well, I'm in this cliche now. Now I see why it was so important that, that you know, a thousand other people already said it, right? Now I get it. Yeah. I didn't get it before because I never had an awakening. I never had a moment, you know? Yeah. And I'm not, a, I'm not a recovering alcoholic or anything. I've just pretty much chilled out in my life, but I've definitely gone to a much more normal place that I was in my twenties, you know, just an absolute maniac all the time. And I recognized in myself that, that dangerous path, you know, and it's always there still to some extent. If I get pushed into a situation, I'll find, holy shit. Yeah. I just partied my ass off for three days or something. It still happens now and again, but I do suffer more for it because I'm not the young man I once was. So what yeah. Lars was saying about getting those hangovers, I never used to get hangovers, never. And I mean, like we're talking week long, week long benders, never, ever. And now I occasionally get to the point where it's like, I'll wake up the next day and I am sick as a dog. And it's just like, wow, that's crazy. I really shouldn't have had those like, you know, 10 drinks last night or something. Right. <laughs> yeah. right. That's insane. Uh, I have a question for both of you. Um, Marito, when, uh, when did you like, um, when did you make the decision that, okay, this is not working and do whatever you did and how did you become uh, sober? And then, uh, um, and sort of how's that been, especially being a stand-up comedian? And then, Bob, my question for you is, I know you slowed down, but have you ever had considerations or thought like, you know what, I'm just going to quit drinking completely? I know some people have them, some people don't. Okay, I'll leave the floor to you first, so go ahead. Okay, no, so I, um, so like I, like I was telling you guys, like I've been through like rehab, sober living, all that. I've been through all of it, you know what I mean? Like I, I was like through yep. all the halfway homes, all of that shit. So uh, after the last relapse, um, I just, I was like, fuck man, I, w I was on a bender, like waking up in after hours, all that shit. Um, like I, I started losing shows again, all this shit, right? But I, I remember I called my mom and I was like, yo ma, like, I'm gonna be honest with you. Like I, I relapsed, it was, and I had three years sober. So I'm like, I relapsed, mm -hmm. and I'll be honest with you, I don't think I can go back, like, to to go get help. Like, I'm just, this is how I'm going to die. Like, I'm going to, like, just keep drinking, and if I can control it, cool. If I can't, that's it. Like, like I'm done trying to, like, better myself, because, like, obviously, like, this is just a curse, and I'm going to live it like this. And every, and I've spoken like that to my mom before, but... But this, and she always cried. She's always like crying, like, Marito, why are you doing this? Like, blah, blah, blah. But this time she didn't cry. And I was like, what's wrong with you? Why aren't you crying? And she's like, because you, she's like, if anyone has proven to me that you can get out of a negative situation and make it a positive one, it's you because of your experience. You've, you've, you've fallen so low but climbed out each time that when you tell me this, I know that you have the courage inside of you to make yourself better. And I remember I started bawling. And I was about to go mm. to the Madison on Toronto. In Toronto. I was going to go to Madison and drink my face dumb. Right? Oh, yeah, that's where you do that. But, <laughs> but, but, the, but the fact that she told me that, like, something awakened inside of me that was like, oh, this is the last time. And I, I hung up the phone and I went home. Uh, I did push-ups. I have like a pull-up bar. I was doing that, and then yeah, and it's it's been uh, ten months since that, and it's all oh, because of my mom. That's like, amazing. My mom's unconditional love, and like that cliche of like, like you know, unconditional love. Uh, yeah, like all the cliches, like you were saying, they just always like, oh, I'm actually living it. Like, yeah. Yeah. And and my mom was spewing cliches. Oh, if anyone could teach me that you could do this, it's you, like all that shit. And, mm -hmm. it, and, and it was true. And I was like, oh, fuck. So, right. so yeah. it's different this time. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's not about like, it's not about like, oh, I'm doing this because like, I, I want to save my show or my career 
or any of that. It's it's more of like, oh, I have it. In, I have a force inside of me that allows me to not be that drunk guy because that drunk guy is a big part of my life. And it's easy. It's this easy to go back to it. Sure. But I have sure. something inside of me that makes it just as easier, even more easier to not be him. If that makes sense. It does. Kudos, kudos to your mom. What a good mom. Shout out to Marito's mom right now. The That's greatest. Huge, man. That, that like, you I know. like cheering up, hearing that even too. Like for your mom to, to be that like present, like she could have freaked out and started to like curse you or, or started to cry like normal, but for her to, to, to think that and then say that to you, that's huge. Yeah. Man. It's so yeah, it's huge. The power of compassion, man. It's beautiful. And then yeah. I picture you, I picture you just leaving the Madison and you went home and just did the like most badass Rocky montage ever. Just screaming, I love you, mom. I love you, mom. <laughs> Came back to the Madison with the samurai sword and just slaughtered everybody. Right, right. We should. I want to. I want to give a quick. Uh, let's give a quick shout out. To, uh, Ray hopped on the call here. Uh, he's uh, hanging out, chilling here. What up, Ray? Hey, how's it going? You have Long time contacts. No time. You have contacts in, or is this some weird Instagram filter? I can't tell what's happening here. Or do you just have the weirdest? You can put filters on this. This is not Instagram, right? No, this, this is, is Zoom. A <laughs> are you a vampire what the fuck are you yeah that's amazing well thank you for uh thank you for hanging out this is marito lopez here uh who's a amazing uh stand-up comedian and actor and he's guest on the show here today um telling us all about his uh crazy drunk and disorderly stories and and uh how he's gotten over some of them uh so bob your uh your answer to that question well absolutely I mean, there have been times when I've, I've never hit, I've never hit rock bottom. Uh, mm -hmm. I guess that's one of the things. And that's something they say, again, it's another one of those cliches that everyone talks about, but I've never hit rock bottom. I've, I've fallen pretty far. I didn't spend a lot of time in drunk tanks because I was always the guy working at the booze can. So it was okay if I slept there. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, no, I'm, I'm, not wow. even, I'm not even kidding. Like, you know what I mean? That's the thing. It was completely facilitated. So I didn't get arrested very often, although it did happen. I have had a few situations where I realized I had to drastically change the nature of the kind of partying I was doing. Uh, like again, I've dated the wrong women and been in situations with people I shouldn't have hung out with for a long period of time where it's like, okay, I'm hanging out with drug dealers and constantly hanging out with, you know, gangsters and thugs and weirdos. And you get to the point where just the associations you have don't make you feel safe. You wake up in the morning and you're like, wow, that was a weird place. I was, you know, with a bunch of hookers last night and some guy with a shotgun and like, it was just a weird time, you know? Right. Yeah. So it was, a, it's a different level of, um, of uncomfort and you decide, okay, look, I got to change my associations. I got to maybe, maybe get a little bit of separation, a little bit of distance from this life because if I don't, it's going to kill me mm -hmm. or worse than that, it's going to suck me in forever. You know, I've always tried to keep like one foot on dry land. I don't know if that means anything, but it's like the lifestyle gets so crazy and so out of control. If you don't keep one foot on dry land, it can just pull you right in completely. It's like the undertow, you know? Yeah, and for sure. And I, think, and I think a lot of guys that do what I do play a really dangerous game with that lifestyle. They flirt with it and they tease with it. And they never, you know, and you, it's really dangerous because you never know when you'll get sucked in. You'll, you know, you'll find that one thing you can't say no to or that one, you know, bad vice or that one bad night. And it turns into the rest of your life or the end of your life. You know what I mean? So I think that's, that's the game that I've played. So the answer is, yeah, I thought about it a lot. I thought of quitting working as a bouncer many, many times. I have thought of, you know, quitting smoking cigarettes. I thought of all these things a number of times that you have to have that eureka moment. You know, you have to find that rock bottom. You've got to be there first. And I don't think I've ever hit that. So I've, I've always just said, okay, I think I'm in control. I think I'm okay. Despite all these idiotic stories, I, you know, I've always managed to at least turn a profit and come out on top, you know? Yeah. And so, thus, so thus far I've been like, okay, it hasn't stopped me from finding opportunities. In fact, if anything, it's created them. I mean, hell, this show right now is another <laughs> example of that, really, when you think about right. it, right? Right. So, yeah. You know, all kinds of things like that. It's difficult to say. So, yeah, I've definitely had those moments, but I've never had the Eureka moment. Um, I mean, my mother passed away when I was a teenager, so I don't have that story either but the thing is even if i did 
I never hit far enough down that I needed that, right? I don't yeah. need that kick in the ass yet. And if it ever happens, I'm blessed with a good enough group of friends and family. I'm sure someone would say, okay, Bob, like, seriously, you've reached that point now. Like, that's enough, right? Like, you're ruining friendships. You're burning bridges. You're destroying your life. You've got to fucking wake up. But thankfully, I'm blessed. I feel like I haven't been there yet. So, you know. Well, part of that too, Bob, might be is you, your case is kind of interesting because you t famously talk about how your rock bottom in your life almost started this drinking and drugs thing when That's your right. mom passed away and then you subsequently got hit by a truck and were laid yeah. up. So it's in a, in a weird way, you got rock bottom first. It's like I'm working my way out from bottom up. Right, right. So yeah, instead of, yeah instead you're like of Benjamin ending. buttoning this. It's yeah, why, like as I'm getting stay, older, yeah. yeah, as I'm getting older, I drink more responsibly. I don't party nearly as much. My lifestyles become a lot more relaxed. I started off like an atomic bomb, like literally just everything constantly, nothing, no breaks, no nothing. But they're also really the consequences were actually rather mild. Like I managed to avoid running face first into that brick wall, and I've been slowly climbing the hill towards different aspects and avenues of my life but it seems like yeah it seems like rather than spiraling downward i had one major explosive breakup and just fell apart and have been putting myself back together slowly since then it's like why you're saying of uh sex drugs and rock and roll you can't advocate for everyone you've said it multiple times yeah but these stories have brought you out of it so yeah, I can't say I can't say the lifestyle works for everybody. I wouldn't advocate it for everybody. Very much like Hunter S. Thompson said, you know, I can't advocate it for everybody, but it's always treated me all right. So yeah. I can't deny, and I'm not going to say that I'm sorry for the guy that I've been because I mean that's who I am. It's made me who I am, and I'm pretty proud of the guy that I've become. I wasn't always this proud, you see, but that's part of the difference, right? Now that I have a little more self-respect, I think I'm just a better person generally, you know. I'm better to my friends. I'm definitely better to my loved ones. I'm more reasonable to have around. So, yeah. Quick, uh, quick question answer. Uh, like, if you can remember the just a quick anecdote. Toughest cop, Big Bob and Poppy. <laughs> Who was the toughest cop you had to deal with? Like the biggest prick. Why? Why did they stick out to your in your memory? Do you remember like dealing with law enforcement and they just like. Also, Ray, if you've got questions, uh, if there's an audience question from Ray for Bob or um, Marito, just throw your hand up and we'll go to you. I've, I've had so many cops, like, like crazy cops, but the one that I always remember was in uh, university. Uh, there, there used to be this thing called Bermuda Shorts Day at UFC. Mm. And uh, like, it was like a big beer garden on the, on the campus. And like uh, you would wear like shorts and like whatever and like it, but but it was like during the winter so it was like super crazy people were like just having fun and this was before right before I started like snapping so I was uh I went I went to another university so I wasn't even in this one so I had to get a fake bracelet <laughs> right and uh, like while I was partying doing all that shit I guess the bracelet fell off and one of the security guards. Uh, this like super skinny white dude. He came up to me and he was like, yo man, you gotta go. Your uh, your bracelet fell off. I'm like, get the fuck out of here, bro. Right? And then that day he was like, no, dude, honestly, you gotta go. And then I was like, fuck it, whatever. So I'm still partying and then all of a sudden he comes back with this giant cop, massive dude. And the cop's like, hey buddy, I heard you have a bracelet and I heard this guy calmly told you to leave and you said no. And I was like, all right, bro, I gotta go. So I, as I'm walking, the cop starts pushing me. <laughs> my back, right? So he's like, "I, right, buddy, you're not walking fast enough. Just being a dickhead, right?" So he pushes me a few, like, like a little bit too hard. So I turn around and I push him. I'm like, "Don't fucking <laughs> touch!" But before I can finish my sentence, he takes my arm, puts me on the ground, and then my head hits something, and I'm <laughs> again, my face is gushing. Right? Oh. And then the cop, the cop, like takes me he walk, takes me out of there he like his partner's out of by a van because they have a van like parked outside just in case if they got to take people Ew, so van cops. just in case like, you came to the party right <laughs> <laughs> so so the guy the guy was like the guy was like listen man uh tell me right now why i shouldn't take you straight uh to downtown and I'm like, bro, my, 
I'm like, bro, my parents are coming home from El Salvador today. Like, please, please don't take me to, to jail. And then after he's like, well, you shouldn't have touched an officer. And then after I was like, bro, you were touching me. And he's like, you see this badge? You see this fucking badge? It's, it means I can do whatever the fuck I want to you. Do you have a badge? And I said, wow. no, sir. No, sir, I do not. <laughs> and then he was like, he was like, okay, now we understand uh, our positions. And then he let me go. But I remember uh, like how fucking terrified yeah. I was. That's interesting, because yeah, on the on the one that's hand, great. that guy's like he's an asshole, but on the other, he kind of taught you a good lesson too. He that did. Let you go too. Say, I'll be honest with you. A lot of the cops I dealt with, like, uh, uh, sometimes they were like pretty, like too much. Like you could tell, like there was some racial shit, right? Especially in Calgary, like it was like a little bit fucked up. But a lot of them, like, gave me some lessons. So many of them were like, "Listen, man, you're a good kid." Like you can, you can get out of this. Like, I remember one time, instead of taking me to the drug tank, they took me to my parents' house and they, and they told my parents, this kid like is really smart and he, he's really funny. He was making us laugh the whole way uh, <laughs> right. in the car, but he's like, you have to get him help or else he's, he's going to end up, you know, dead or on the streets. Yeah. I feel like you, um, we have that similarity. I feel Bob and I think probably Trev a little bit, a little bit of us, when we're drunk and in that party mode is like we're performing like to be the life of the party like <laughs> yeah. you're stiffler or you're belushi from animal house like yeah there's a there's a little bit of right. uh, myth to to that like being the fucking frank the tank the party guy right yeah. Well, also yeah i've always had i've always had the problem of when i should have shut my fucking mouth i didn't Right. You know, yeah. when most when most people would just be like, okay, I'm gonna like just take it now. Yes, sir, no sir, blah blah blah. I just can't fucking do that. So I always open my big mouth and say something fucking stupid. So, you know, I've told stories about this before where like cops stop me and I should have said nothing. And instead I say something stupid. And because I do, I end up getting a fucking like five hundred dollar ticket for nothing. You know what I mean? Like I could have saved myself all kinds of hassle, but instead I fucking shoot my mouth off, you know. And it's yeah. not because the cop's an asshole. It's because I'm a fucking asshole. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I know it. You know, like, time I was pissing in that alleyway and the cops, like, flashes the lights, like, what's going on back there? I'm like, oh, I'm really glad to see you, officer. Maybe you can render assistance. I seem to have sprung a leak, you know? <laughs> and the cop's like, oh, yeah, funny guy? And I was like, yeah. And I come out of the alleyway and he's like, well, here you go. Laugh this one up. And it's like a $400 mm -hmm. ticket. And I'm like, wow, that's not very funny. And he's like, nope, it's not, eh? Gets in the car, <laughs> right? Same kind of shit. It's like, I can't blame him for taking me, at, you know, like yeah. a jerk off. I was a jerk off. Now, I have had times when the cops were just unreasonable. Yeah. Like one time we were sitting out front of my buddy's house. It was my, my girlfriend's house, actually, at the time. It was a no-smoking house, right? So we were smoking in the car in her driveway. Like, literally, it's one of those driveways that sinks down in front of the house, you know? And there's a okay. big garage. So we're sitting in the car right out front of her house. It's like 1 o'clock in the morning. And this cop car pulls up behind us. Mm -hmm. while we're on private property comes out the cop starts knocking on the window the cop's like what's going on in there and whatever we open the car up we're like smoking cigarettes we're like what do you mean what's going on here we're just chilling out we're doing drugs in the car we're like what no we're smoking cigarettes it's cold outside it's canada like we're you know we're just smoking some butts man and the cop's like all right well i want your descriptions your id get out of the car they're like giving us the whole works right and we're thinking about it we're on this woman's private property like on her front lawn in a in a parked car not drinking, we're not driving, we're not going anywhere, we're smoking cigarettes, we're all of age, you know, we had to get out of the car, and the cops wouldn't believe that I was as tall as I was, you know, it was, like, <laughs> it was a short, a short woman and this short guy, and they wouldn't believe, until I, like, literally got out of the car, and I'm standing, towering over this guy, like, looking down, and I'm like, I'm like, dude, what do you want now, I'm like, is the circus, <laughs> I feel, I'm like, is the circus over, can I go back to my life, like, are you done staring at me now, like, it's great, you know, like, you got my ID and shit, like, what the fuck do you want? You're going to charge me with a crime? Like, I'm sitting, be, being tall on a lawn is now a crime? Like, what the fuck, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, I've had, I've, I've had experiences both ways where cops are really good to me. And I've also had experiences where cops are just really weird. It didn't make much sense, you know? And I think that's true of anyone in security. Like, I've had bouncers who are really nice to me and really good at guys and just decent doing their job. And I've also had guys who are power tripping assholes. I think that's yeah. the nature of authority, right? You give anybody a little bit of authority and it can go one of two ways. 
Either they, t- either they handle it with responsibility or they're a fucking prick. Yeah. Quick question. Is this working? Hello? Yeah. Question from Ray. I was, just, I was just wondering, have you guys ever been handcuffed and beat up by the cops? <laughs> uh, oh, yes. good fun for yes, Bob. I have. Yes, I, yes, I have. Oh. I, um, I got really, really wasted, and a cop was trying to escort me to the car, and I wouldn't go. So she clapped one of the cuffs on me, and I tossed her over the hood of the car. <laughs> so the other four cops did not take too kindly to that and batoned the ever-living shit out of me. <laughs> oh, God. And I just got knees, knees, elbows, head and toes, knees, elbows, head and toes, <laughs> knees, elbows, head and toes. <laughs> you repeat until you're lying on the sidewalk going, please, not the face, not the face. You know, like, it was pretty good. That's actually, uh, that story, the full uh, story, Ray, if you want to listen to that, is in episode one. Uh, yeah. I believe it's called The Drinking Contest that led yes, to that is. night. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Description, full layout of what happened, yeah. Yeah, they, they beat my ass. They beat my ass. And I earned it. I mean, I just, I get another one of those times when I could have said, like, totally, the cop's just abusing me. No, 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 no. I was a total drunk ass, and they beat me. They just, they just beat the shit out of me, so. Yo, St. Patrick's Day, uh, oh, long time boy. ago, long time ago, like when, when I was in university, uh, again, <laughs> that's when I like shit got bad. So it was St. Patrick's Day and like I was at uh, MRU, like we, we had this like lounge where you can drink or whatever, like they all sure. do. So they had a big party and I, I like, I remember drinking this big schooner with like green beer and I just yeah. blacked out and I don't remember <laughs> any of this. Okay, but apparently, like, uh, I was so drunk that I was like, my shirt was off. I was like, standing on top of a like a table, and I was just spitting everywhere. <laughs> so the bouncers like all grabbed me, and I was like being like belligerent. I was like, you know, going crazy. And then they took me outside. They called the cops, and then the cops like uh, apparently they, like, uh, like I went down. They, like they took me out to the parking lot. And it was like sort of, sort of similar with you, like they handcuffed me, but I guess like I had a, a free, my elbow was free or some shit, so I started smashing the window of the, oh. of the cop car. And then no one, no one has told me who did it. It was either the bouncers or the cops or maybe both, but they all fucked me up so bad that my face was a giant scab. Like I couldn't open my eyes. It was like, it was insane. Oh. So anyways, I guess the cops uh, were going to take me, like, to jail or whatever. But a shooting happened down the street. So the cops left me at the, at the, at the school in, like, the little, like, cell that the security people have. Wow. Right, so, right, right, in the security office. Yeah, so they had, to go, they had to go do whatever they had to go do. And then in the morning, I woke up and, and the security guard showed me my face, and it was insane. Like it was, I could, like I, I look, I, I look like, I didn't look like me at all. So anyways, I took the bus home and I heard nothing for a week. And uh, the university wrote me, they're like, yeah, you, you're going to, you're sus- suspended or whatever the fuck it is. So, but I heard nothing from the cops until like three weeks later. And the constable or whoever, like the main guy called me and he was like, is this Mario Lopez? And I'm like, yeah. And he was like, I heard you had a run-in with, with a couple of our guys. And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, you're lucky that shooting happened because you you should be charged with assault and all this shit. And he's uh, like, let's just say that we're going to let you go and this should be like a, a moment for you to clean up your life. And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, they roughed you up real hard, eh? And I said, yeah. And he's like, yeah, well, that's your punishment. And then he hung up. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> that's and that pretty was crazy. It, bro. And that that uh, moment should have stopped me from drinking, but I yeah. kept going. Yeah, because usually if they get their licks in, they they can't book you, or they it's a less chance that they book you because it's either they book you or they get licks. It's kind of one or the other. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. So and, and dude, I was fucked up. Like it took a, a month for my my face to heal. Ooh. Yeah. Marito, to me, when you tell all these drinking stories and especially that one, like the conversations with the cops, I, I'm just picturing Tony Montana from Scarface. You're Al Pacino. <laughs> you, know, you turn into I, Al Pacino I, I like when I'm you just, get drunk. 
crazy thug. It's so funny because I'm the opposite. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like such a sweetheart, nicest guy ever. And then you oh, just go you. into like, um, like you're just thinking. Oh, oh once, the in, well, once the inhibitions are off, man, it's amazing the personality traits that come out. Like, I'm not a hell of a dancer, but I've decided that some on occasions that I can cut a rug like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> and it's just a strange and embarrassing sight to see a giant fat man trying to like pull off the Michael Jackson moves and stuff. Like it's, <laughs> It doesn't quite jive, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I have exactly a, it, right? I'd like to table a question, uh, and this is really for anyone, but um, our current situation being whatever version of lockdown, quarantine, social isolation you're in, how do you think this is playing out for people on different ends of the spectrum drinking wise? On the one hand, bars and clubs and after hours aren't operating. On the other hand, you're stuck at home and you can still go to the LCBO. So how do you think this is playing out? for people or for you guys personally all right well i'll take that one first i think that i think that some people i mean this is sort of the spectrum like it's always the case right i think that some people are handling this better than others i mean like i know guys who have just sat around and done nothing for the entire two weeks but get fucked up and just sit in their apartments wasted right i've known other people have been trying to find ways to find other work avenues creative expressions I mean, things like this show, the podcast, things like that, you know, just ways to stay active and stay busy. But uh, for me, it's been sort of middle of the road. I'll have a couple of beers here and there, but I'm at home. So not really interested. I'm not out anywhere. There's not a social thing. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like definitely curbed my behavior. Yeah. I can't, again, though, I can't speak for everybody because I'm sure depending on how much of an alcoholic you are, there are lots of guys. In the beer store, about, lady. or even like what are those like uh, entertainment district heads who fucking work nine to five, Monday to Friday, hard so that they can hit the weekend, you know, hit the weekend lineups, get down in the clubs. Like, what are they doing? They must be bugging out. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I can't even imagine it. If if I if I didn't go through like the process of cleaning up, and I was still drinking, I don't know what I I I would probably just. Oh man, I can't even imagine it. But since I went to rehab and like I had to be isolated, this I'm used to this. You know what I mean? Right. I'm used to this kind of like solitude. So I love it because yourself, I'm writing. Yeah. I'm writing. I'm being creative, even doing stuff like this. Like I love this shit, man. I, yeah. I can't wait till I get out because I, I I feel like I'm gonna come out. Like <laughs> Marito, do you want to share um, for anyone, in, I think your perspective, um, having gone through this for anyone who's listening, um, like anything like your thoughts or like how you frame this or just how you avoid drinking now, like, like what's changed, are there different habits, thought processes, systems, or like what's the main thing that you rely on? Well, for, for like a guy like me, like, like I, I, I legitimately think I'm like a, like, like an alcoholic who can't like I literally can't drink like that's right. not an option for me you know what I right. mean so like but the but the thing like the tricky part about that is like is uh learning that it's subjective you know what I mean like not one way works for everyone do you understand right. like right there is no uh, one way actually right, yeah, of course. yeah so no, share your personal not, but it's so easy when you're when you're like at the beginning of it to like latch on to one thing and then think and then like believe that that's the end all be all you know what i mean sure. like i i have no problems with aa like um i i actually i still go to aa like i'll go to meetings just to refresh but the but what's scary about aa it's it's very easy to like to think that that's the only way you know what i mean whereas like in my experience I, i've just learned that uh, constantly reading about like the science behind addiction, uh, like talking talking about it, like helping people out, writing about it, performing, all that shit has helped me. Like therapy, um, you know, like I, I talked with a counselor. Like there's so many avenues I take. Like I, I made my own recovery, right? right? Uh, and and that's not like saying that I did it on my own. I just picked and chose what what worked for me. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, everything you mentioned, everything you mentioned there has very cathartic and therapeutic roots too. I mean, it's all internal introspection and creativity, finding yourself, you know, centering your own consciousness. But those things are all very key 
to making bold lifestyle changes, right? So if you're going to change yourself, it starts with you and it starts with finding those things, right? So for sure. And it's a, I think and everything and it's you mentioned was. Yeah. And it's a never ending battle, man. Like every day. And, but, but like you were saying before, Bob, it's, mm -hmm. it's about like not hating or uh, resenting that part of you. That's like right. I, I've accepted it. You know what I mean? You own it. And yeah, you got to own it. And, and I'm also grateful for it. Right. Because that part of me, that struggle, like all that pain has made me into such a more stronger person and now my stand-up is beyond what I was when I started. Because Excellent. I, I have an experience, you know what I mean? I have a story. Yeah, that's huge. That's huge. Yeah. You're owning it, you're owning your own tail and you're making it serve you rather than serve it. That's that's exactly. huge, man. That's huge. Yeah. That's amazing. I like it. I like it. Uh, well, we're coming up on about an hour. I don't know if there's any other topics you guys want to uh, discuss. Uh, I'll, I'll take the moment to, to do the usual social plugs. Uh, if you're watching this on any social media, you can find us on all the podcast platforms. The full videos are on YouTube. Uh, what else? Um, every Monday at 8 p.m. we do a recording. Marito, where's the best thing? Uh, anything you want to plug or where should people go for you? Uh, you're just my Instagram, no champagne poppy, Twitter I love, as well. I love that too, no <laughs> champagne poppy. Yeah. That's nice. genius. That's a good one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, and also I have a blog out right now. I'm just writing about my experience here and also with addiction. All we just shit. shared that. I shared that today on the uh, 39 yeah, Drunken Disorderlies. It was great. Yeah, I saw it as well. Yeah. It was a really yeah, good story. You. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I'm just, man, I'm just I'm creating every day, I, I you know? I just want to say quickly, to if there's out. a will, there's a way. Uh, Ray, there's a Ray says that where there's a will, there's a way. Thank you, Ray. Oh, yeah. Right on, bro. That's true, too. Sometimes where there's a way, there's a guy named Will, too. I've met that guy. <laughs> yeah. He works in the bus terminal in Concordia, actually. He's a pretty good guy. But uh, Parting, any other parting words? Bob, Trev? Uh, nothing. I just wanted to thank uh, Marito again, Marito again, for coming on the show. Thank you very much, man. It was great. To have yeah, you. Marito, that was great. That was great. Yeah, Those were some of the best nice stories uh, on, on yeah. both ends. Yeah, that was that really was good. good. People are going to love this episode for sure. Trev. Yeah. No. Thank you for your uh, for your candidness. And uh, this is kind of still in its uh, initial phase, but we're we're figuring it out, and I think it went really well. So. Yeah. Thank you, boys. That was great. That was so fun. Yeah, man. Yeah, we'll, definitely, we'll definitely talk to you again for sure. We, you seem like you have a lot more stories you can share with us too. So. Oh, buddy, so much. That when you told, when you asked me, Lars, when you were like, "Yo, bro, like, do you have any like stories?" I was like, oh, <laughs> "Dude, <laughs> maybe we'll have, go there. We'll have yeah, a full have season. Three. We'll have thirty-nine yeah. drunken disorderly season three, Marito Lopez. <laughs> it's just all. Yeah, that's right. And we just call it. We'll call it. We'll call it. Enter Marito Lopez. You know. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like the, the big dramatic music breakdown and like yeah that's right we can open with our wrestling luchador styles it'd be great <laughs> oh, dude we yeah, gotta do that we'll, one day we'll introduce uh the world to no champagne poppy when he had lots and lots of champagne <laughs> <laughs> when he was right. when he was uh more champagne poppy you know champagne like poppy. maybe too much champagne poppy right yeah. <laughs> Right. That was great. So we'll uh, look for this on every platform. Obviously, we'll hit you up, Marito, with links and everything like that. So we'll cross promo and everything. And Bob, you want to uh, say goodnight, goodbye to everyone, and we'll see people next week? Yeah, man. All right. Prison is a pandemic. You guys keep your socks on. Stay tuned. Be healthy. Be happy. And uh, remember, quarantine is not for everybody, but don't kill grandma, okay? So take care, you guys. We love you. Stay healthy. Stay sane. We'll see you next week. All right. Later, boys. Thank you, boys. Love Bye. you. Bye. Thank you guys. Good night, guys. Take care. Pew, pew, pew. Good night. Pew, pew, pew. Pew, pew, pew. Podcast over now. Boom.